let's work some practice nomenclature problems in real time. First, we'll practice with name to formula, and then we're going to come back with some formula to name problems. So, here we go. Provide the formula for the following compounds. Chromium phosphide. I put chromium phosphide. What's the charge on chromium? 3 plus phosphide. Let's see. That's going to be a minus 3. And so that looks like it's charge neutral as, as it is. So the formula is just CRP. Manganese phosphate. Manganese, this particular version, has a charge of plus 2. Phosphate, that was memory. PO4, and that's 3 minus. One of these is odd, and one of them's even, so I can cross multiply. So let's put the 3 beneath manganese and the 2 beneath phosphate and clean that up. And we have MN3 and two phosphate groups, and that's manganese phosphate. Calcium chloride, right? One calcium on one chloride. Calcium has a charge of plus two. I know that because it's in group two, and they all have a plus two. And chlorine, as I well remember, is a minus one. It gains one electron. One is odd and one's even cross multiply. And so that goes to CaCl2. Ammonium sulfate. Ammonium is memory. That ion was NH4 plus. Sulfate, that was also memory. Memory SO4 2 minus. That comes from sulfuric acid. Is it charge neutral? No, I'm going to need two ammoniums to make this charge neutral. And I'll clean that up. NH42SO4. Next, calcium oxide. Calcium oxygen. Calcium has a charge of plus 2. It's in group 2 again. Oxygen has a charge of minus 2 as usual. And I can see that's charge neutral. So the formula for calcium oxide is just CaO, nitric acid. That's an easy one because that was a memory acid, one of the seven I was supposed to memorize. Nitrate ion. I don't remember that, but wait a minute. That's the 8 version of ic acid. And how do we get the nitrate? We knock the H off, and for every H we drop off, we add a minus sign. So NO3 with a minus sign would be nitrate ion. And finally, phosphite ion. I don't remember that. All I remembered was... H3PO4 was phosphoric acid. That means H3PO3 must be phosphorus acid. And it's from the us acids that we get the ite materials. How do we get the ite? We write the PO3. We're taking off three H's, so we have to add a minus three. So phosphite ion, PO3 with a three minus. Well, let's now work a few formula to name problems. Before I get into those, I want to remind you that there's at least three things you want to know when you go to work a nomenclature problem. One, you want to remember your basic strategies, your basic protocols for you to name, identify compounds, and then to apply the right rules to them. You want to be able to know how to determine the charge on nonmetals, and you want to make sure you can identify type 1 from type 2 metals. And with that, let's get cracking. Name the formula KNO3. I see the two pieces. I see a potassium, and I see a NO3, which I recognize as a nitrate. 
the nitrate coming from nitric acid, which I had memorized. I'm going to do a quick check because I do see a metal there. Is it a type 1 metal? Yes, it is, so I'll stop. Potassium nitrate. Next compound, NO, I recognize as a binary compound, but the first thing I want to do is name it as a type 1. Nitrogen oxide. Now let's check that I've named it as a type 1. Is it a type 1? No. It doesn't have a metal, so it can't even be a type 2. It must be a type 3. So what do I need to do? I need to fix it with a prefix. Knowing the subscript of each of these is 1, that would be mononitrogen monoxide. We don't have a mono prefix in front of the first one. Nitrogen monoxide is the material. Next, Al2O3, I see it's diatomic, so I'm going to name it as a type 1 aluminum oxide. Is it a type 1? Well, let's look and find aluminum on our chart. I see that it is a type 1, so I'm done. The name of this compound is aluminum oxide. And finally, Ni2SO43. I do see that is binary. Let's name it nickel. SO4. Hmm, I recognize that as being part of a polyatomic acid. And now that I think about it, it's sulfate because H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. So SO4 ion must be sulfate. I've named it as a type 1 and let's do our check. Is it a type 1 metal? Well, let's check and see. I see on the periodic chart that it is a type 2 metal. Therefore, I must provide a Roman numeral also. So let's go through the work to figure out what it's going to be. I don't know the charge on the nickel. That's what I'm going to put in parentheses. I know sulfate has a 2 minus charge. So the total negative charge is going to be minus 6. What minus 6 is equal to 0 because it's a charge neutral compound? And the answer is positive 6. And finally, 2 times what equals 6? And the answer is 3. The material that we have here is nickel 3 sulfate. And that's it. Didn't take long to name over a dozen compounds. Get familiar with your rules, be able to identify quickly what type of compound it is so you can apply the correct rule, and finally, practice, practice, practice.